Hey guys, welcome back to Faraday Research. It is Wednesday night. I uh, haven't done a video in a while. Um, just to show you what I'm doing, how much power I'm putting in. It's only 40 milliamps. And uh, the light's going. And this one is just basically taking power off the wheel. Induction coil with a core in it. Lighting up an LED, no problem. Look how bright it is. That's just free energy right there. And now we're using um, a new wheel that I got. It's running amazing. It's just flying. It's over 2,000 RPM right now. Neon's going with it. one of them is burnt out. But it takes 90 volts each just to run those. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Running amazing. Shut it off here. But this thing's running well over 2000 RPM. But it's still generating power in the coil. Even though it's winding down. But, anyways, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, bottom right hand corner, give me a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, there's a couple things I want to point out tonight. So it's becoming more and more apparent to me that. You know, you got to work with a higher power source. You got to work with minimum 18 volts. I've been running at almost 25 volts, 24 volts at about 40 to 50 milliamps, which is really nothing. So if you were to have two batteries hooked up together, 40 milliamps, that means about 20 milliamps draw off each battery, which to a lead acid battery, that's nothing. It's not even drawing really any current off it at all especially if it's car battery so yes uh, i'll show you some of the stuff that i did with it i'll take this off here i'll show you the new wheel this is what i got so i got basically these wheels are for like the walkers and ordered a couple of those and hooked up my neodymium magnets to it and uh yeah basically hooked it up to the shaft and here it is you can see the construction of it. You got the shaft on it. You got the ceramic bearing on the bottom. And I uh, got all the magnets. I got five neodymiums. I got to put bigger ones in. I got to put the big ones in that I had from the other one. They create a bigger field so I can get the efficiencies probably even better. So I'm going to switch these magnets out. I'm going to sand down the wheel a bit so the magnets will actually sit seated into the uh, wheel itself a little better. And I'll probably seal them up with some kind of glue or cement or whatever. But anyways, I just wanted to see how how well this wheel was actually going to work. And it works great. It's very balanced. It's easier to hook up the shaft um, to it and uh, get everything all dialed in properly. So this is the idea of what I'm doing. So I, I have the one drive coil. And now I'm going to have induction coils like this. So i got to get three more. They're going to be about at least a pound each, if not more. And this one here, when I get it up to speed, I can I can uh, create almost three volts AC off this. So I'll have three, six, nine. I could have nine volts AC, which is about four and a half. Uh, yeah, about four volts um, DC. And then all that power can be dumped right back into the circuit and charge the battery that's running the system. So I've got return power as well as the power that's coming on the out through the uh, uh, piezoelectrics and then they go to a load, you know, which right now I'm using lights as just a ballast um, to bleed the system out so it doesn't overload itself. And there's a proximity sensor from a 3D printer. That's what I'm using as my read switch. And uh, yeah, there's really nothing to hide here. It's very very basic but you know the key thing is piezoelectrics 
spark gap switch. Everything in this thing is analog. I'm not using MOSFETs. I'm not using any of that fancy electronics. Everything here is analog, which Dollar talks about. If you listen to a lot of his lectures, he says we got to go back to analog because electricity is like water, meaning that it is a natural phenomenon, just like water is. Water is a natural phenomenon. So is electricity. But the second you start modulating it in an electronic form, it loses its properties. You're, you're not getting the same effect. So I'm using a mechanical spark gap switch is the automotive relay switch, the four pin. And that's the, that's the main switch that runs this motor. It also creates the blue spark, the bluish green spark, which is the radiant spark. So this coil here never ever heats up. It, it always runs at, well right now it feels like it's cooler than the room. So that's not uncommon with my motors. They run two to four degrees below ambient. And I've actually done temperature tests on these coils while it's running. And they're running cooler than the ambient temperature. That means, uh, you, get, you know, when you start cooling off, that means you've got super conductivity. It's, um, it, it's, it's running extremely, extremely efficient because this thing creates cold electricity. It's a different kind of power. This power, I can pump it into batteries. I can pump it into AC lights. It doesn't matter what it is. It won't blow it up. It, it conforms to whatever you're using. It doesn't matter if it's DC or AC. It will work. And it will not destroy the components. That's, that's the thing I'm starting to find out about this. It will not blow stuff up. Even batteries. It won't blow the battery up. Because the energy, it's like it, it knows when it hits wherever the source or the, the point of the load is, it knows what it is and it conforms to it. So that's why I'm able to run lights directly off this pulsating DC current and it could go into batteries, it doesn't do any damage, it doesn't heat up the batteries, nothing. So we're working with a different type of power source here. Uh, if you haven't just subscribed to the channel, bottom right hand corner, also give me a thumbs up if you like the video. I'm open book here. This is it. There's nothing really to hide. It is so friggin' basic. So you can expand off this. I have to get some money together. I gotta get some more coils. I like to have three, maybe even four of them located around the wheel. One drive coil. That's all you need. Because now, as you've seen, I had over 2,000 RPM going on this thing. If I had four of these, I'd have probably pushing 10 to 12 volts AC coming out, which is entirely free. And I've also shorted this coil out while it's running. There's no lens effect. It doesn't affect my motor. Because these induction coils, they actually work better when they're further away from the wheel. And that's another point I want to bring across to everybody. Everybody's running their coils way, way cl too close to the wheel. I could actually run mine ooh, almost about three quarters of an inch away from the wheel because if you got the right magnets, it's going to hit that field that's spinning. This, the field is spinning around the coil, north to south, north to south. That spinning action, this is what I call catching the wake. If you catch the wake of the flux field, that's all you need and it will move your wheel if you're cramming it into there what happens is now you're creating a, a magnetic attraction between your iron core or whatever core you're using and the neodymium magnet on the wheel so now you're creating lens effect you're creating a resistance there that's what you do not want to do you want to bring it back far enough from the, away from the coil that you're just catching the flux field that's spinning around this coil. It's spinning in a circular motion. So at the, at the peak of that flux wave, you're catching the wake with the magnetic uh, attraction or repulsion from your magnet. And as soon as it catches that flux, it's gonna throw it, it's gonna give it a push. And that's all you need. You, you need just enough to catch the wake 
catch the wake of the flux field. You cram it in, you're not going to get any performance. I've noticed as I move this coil away from the wheel as it's spinning, my lights start getting brighter. Why is that? Well, I'm creating less of a resistance on the flux field that's spinning around the coil. If you add, because it's already creating a field, now you're bringing another field of the magnet close to it. So if you start pushing two fields together, what's going to happen? You're going to have resistance. This is a major contributor to lens effect. That's why every motor out there is built wrong. Okay? These motors that we have today should be running on higher voltage. That's why EV Gray, his motor ran over 400. Actually, no, his was in the kilovolts. Um, Joseph Newman, another perfect example, his motor ran on 460 volts DC at like 20 milliamps. So you have to understand, I, I just recently listened to um, a telephone conversation with Dollard and uh, a guy that was interviewing him. And what he's saying is voltage equals current. Current creates EMF, a magnetism in the wire. So if you got EMF, you have electromotive force. If you have electromotive force, that means you have a voltage going through the system. All those things are one. Voltage, current, magnetism, EMF, it's all the same thing. People have to understand this. And it finally clicked with me when he said that. Because if you don't have voltage, you cannot create electromagnetic field in a coil or in a wire at that. So you have to have voltage. So if you have voltage, now you got current going through the wire. If you have current, now you've created electromagne uh, electromagnetism, and you know you you got electromotive force now. Now you got electromotive force. You can actually do work with that. So all these things I'm telling you, they're all the same thing. And when you understand that. That now you will understand why I'm using 24 volts to run my motor now because the higher the voltage the higher the current's going to be going through the circuit even though that it's only showing I'm drawing 40 milliamps a draw I'm creating a, 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 a way bigger of electromagnetic field if I'm creating an electromagnetic field that means I am creating electromotive force that force is what creates the potential coming out of the coil to power my light load whatever I, I want to power so those th those things are all connected and they're all the same thing so yeah uh, there's no other way I can describe it other than that um, so now I understand why Newman was working with high voltage why EV gray was working on um, his motor and the kilovolts is because the kilovolts is what's creating the current if you don't have voltage you don't have current same thing with the end machine. The end machine, that's why that machine failed. It was able to create current, but it wasn't actually able to create the potential because there's not enough voltage. As soon as you can get the voltage in the system, things happen. And that's why Newman's motor was so successful and why EV Gray's motor was so successful. It's because they were using a lot higher of a potential of power. So to run a motor like this, you don't need amps. You need microamps or milliamps to run a motor like this and get decent amount of power out of it. Like this thing was flying. Like it was absolutely going so fast. And that shows me I am creating good voltage power output. I was lighting up pretty much all the lights. Number two, I got mechanical power there. The thing was spinning over 2000 RPM. And I got a, um, the electromotive force that's creating the current through that coil. I'm able to drive stuff with it. So, yeah, um, leave your comments below. Any questions, comments, uh, suggestions. Um, yeah, I'll get back to you on that. And, uh, yeah, so just kind of think about that, you know, what I'm talking about. Voltage, EMF, current and um, electromotive force, all that stuff is all as one thing. 
and it starts with the voltage input of your system. See a lot of guys playing with 9 volts, 10 volts, 12 volts. It's, it's too low. You got to get up into at least 18 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts. Higher the voltage, the better. Because the higher voltage you go, the less amount of current that you need to drive the circuit. Period. Voltage is easy to create. Current is not. Okay? Voltage is easy to create. Current is not. If you understand that, then you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, my link for Patreon is below. PayPal donate. I highly recommend it. All my drawings, all my schematics, everything's in Patreon. People are still asking me about putting up schematics. Go to my Patreon. Sign up. Donate five bucks or whatever a month, whatever you can afford. And then you got all that stuff there. It's all there for you, waiting for you. You just have to sign up. So, yeah, any... Um, I guess that's it for today. I'm not going to make this too long of a video, but... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be working on this. I got a couple other things I want to work on too. And uh, yeah, uh, everybody have a great night and we'll see everybody soon.